What's going on guys? It's KR. I know. I haven't vlogged in forever, but I got you this weekend. It's Thursday. Yeah, packing the camper up, getting ready to fill up with water. And uh, as most of you guys know, I had a crash at the John Penton or the Burr Oak and uh, banged myself up a little bit. Ended up uh, tearing my PCL, my meniscus, jacked my knee up pretty good, but we're uh, heading up a little bit early this week. I'm gonna go see Dr. Joe. Um, gonna go up there and get my knee drained. And uh, it should be pretty. I'm gonna take my phone with me, so I'm gonna video him draining my knee. You guys might be interested in it. Maybe not. It might be gross. But, anyways, heading to the race, going up a little bit early. Um, got a chance to wrap it up. Got to beat Strang. So, it's gonna be a tough weekend, but we'll uh, try to muscle through it here. Uh, I've ridden a couple times this week. Took me a minute. I was a little slow and sluggish. Knee was definitely hurting, but I've got to uh, taping it up and making sure it's all tight and tidy. But anyways, going to the race. See you guys soon. Hi okay. guys. Um, good morning. We're going to the <laughs> high point race. Sorry, but I have the sickness. You have a sickness? What sickness do you have? Coronavirus. No, you don't. You're full of. And Collins is already having a morning nap. He's going to make it hard to straighten out for a while. The good news is the exterior muscles, the three in the back that are sprained, they're, a, they're a, a lower degree, an intermediate degree sprain. Your PCL is not quite completely toast. But what happens with an ACL and a PCL before they tear, they stretch and then and that stretch is permanent. It's, it's called plastic deformation. It's not like stretching a rubber band. It's like stretching silly putty. It stays stretched yeah. out. Doesn't so know. the fibers that are, a lot of the PCL fibers are torn, but the ones that are not torn are still stretched. incompetent. So it's like having a yeah. bungee cord that's too long and you're going to hit the ground before it starts doing <laughs> its job, you know? So basically it's just attaching there really not doing it may give lot. you a little support <laughs> like keep your knee from totally dislocating you know hyperextending but it's not gonna it's not gonna serve its normal function the, um, the thing is the knee ligaments don't just keep your knee from shifting that normally they serve as antennas they have lots and lots of little fibers in them called proprioceptive fibers and they tell the muscles when to work because yeah. your ACL and PCL only have one third of the strength needed to control your knee. They have to make your quads and your hamstrings work to help them. And when you tear that ligament, you lose the antennas for your knee, and so it's klutzy. Yeah, I could tell. I've rode a couple times, and I'm just like slow uh, reacting with my my legs and gripping the bike. <clears throat> and as soon as as soon as the bike goes side to side, like when I go to brace or clamp it, like I, I can tell I'm just like sluggish, like slow to react to it. Well, big time but. some people accommodate better than others other you know other ligaments have have um, proprioceptive fibers and can learn to kind of take over and help and there's some people who accommodate a lot better to a ligament tear than others you'll see people after an acl tear that can still play a little bit and not hurt themselves and you see other people just about fall on their face and that's that's accommodation or kind of how your other how your other ligaments are helping out and you've got really good proprioception, really good balance coordination and feedback like most good athletes. And so you will accommodate a lot better than somebody who is, who is not uh, as cat-like, but still gonna impact you a lot. We show that um, with this kind of stuff, when you, when, if you tear your ACL, when you climb stairs, I'm sorry, numbing medicine so the bigger needle doesn't hurt as bad. When you climb stairs with a torn ACL, the knee, the muscles in the knee actually fire in the reverse order that they're supposed to in the knee. The lower leg bone shifts in the wrong direction on the upper leg bone and goes the wrong way. It takes about two years after you get an ACL reconstruction, but eventually it grows a new outer covering called synovium inside the knee. And then it grows new proprioceptive nerve fibers. They're not perfect. They're not as good as the old ones were, but... Um, but you get some proprioceptive function. It always blows my mind how you remember all these different terms and <laughs> all this. Holy shit, that needle was 
big. Yep. Oh, oh, I numbed it up. Part biggest here. pussy when it comes to needles. Ah! Holy fuck! Take it out. You're good. Get a little more rest. I, th I, th I think I might faint. Go ahead. Oh. I'm laying down. I'll catch you. <laughs> I'll keep you from falling off the table. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get a hold. Oh, that's so awkward. Oh, that's awkward. So, oh, it feels <laughs> terrible. I think that's about all I'm gonna get. All right, let me put some new stuff back in there for you. What are you doing? I'm gonna put a little uh, numbing medicine inside your knee. This is part of kind of a reset there. Uh, Take about 30 off and I'm gonna put about 10 back in to numb it up a little bit here for you. Oh. That part's not hurting, is it? I'm sweating. I Maybe I shouldn't wear my jacket for this. <laughs> it just feels weird going in there. I can feel the pressure. All right. Fill it back. You made it, dude. Oh, I don't even want to move my leg. <laughs> Give it about two or three minutes for this to kick in, oh. and then it's going to feel better. Oh. <laughs> so the good news is there's not a lot of blood in your knee. There's a lot, a lot of that, you know, a little bit of blood mixed with the effusion with normal. Uh, thin joint fluid that's in oh. not terrible with a lot of blood. Yeah. Like I said, I that's the scary part for me is for some reason like I don't swell like a normal person. Like even when I did my ACL It didn't get that big, I remember. In the other one and when I did my shoulder it never swelled. That's why I never knew my shoulder was hurt, because it never swelled up. Because when I came <laughs> to you it was pretty it was gone. <laughs> Dude. That one shoulder that we did, the the um, labrum, is what we call a 360 degree label detachment. The only place that your labrum was still attached was to the biceps tendon. It was completely torn off the socket all the way around in a circle and just hanging in the inside of your joint like a donut. <laughs> it's um, about the biggest headache that you can cause a shoulder surgeon to fix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. You ready to try it out? I think. It's good as new. I don't know about that. Look at that, you can see my quad again. <laughs> Hell of a knot from where that needle went. That's where the skin, I numbed up your skin yeah. and raised a wheel over on the skin with a little needle so you wouldn't feel a great big one. Yep. These are big syringes we use, dude. I, mean, I that's know. Horse needles, huh? Yeah. All right. All right, good as new. Go race this weekend. Is this Florida? Are I think at, so. Are we in North Carolina? No, Florida. We're in Florida? <laughs> yeah. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Is this the high voltage? No, it's the Florida race. It's the Florida race. <laughs> I don't see any sand. Do you see sand? Yes. <laughs> Can you wave the key? What's going on, Keith? Oh, not too much. How are you guys Still doing? Got your mask in your bucket, I see. Yep, yep. Can't touch the flyers. No. I'm not <laughs> supposed to touch money either, but well. <laughs> There's right. only so much I can uh, not I dude. can handle anymore. It's I got kinda... you. What's up, little man? Nothing. What's going on? Nothing. What are you doing here so early? Uh no clue. Did you not go to school today? I'm off. You're off? Uh-huh. What do you mean you're off? It's Friday. It's noon on Friday. Yeah, I, I don't have school on Friday. You don't have school on Friday? No. Well, that's about the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What? Oh. They don't have school on Friday. Is the end of school week Monday social, through Friday? Social distance learning. Yep. <laughs> Bold. All right, Saturday evening, Stasic race. Got the kids lined up over here. Little man. Yeah.
Huh? Yeah. yeah. Let me see them What's up, dude? You ready to go, Kawa? Yeah. Too shy. He doesn't want to talk. How can I do that? You gonna get the whole shot? I bet little man's gonna get the whole shot. No, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. You're gonna get it. I wanna get it. I wanna get it. All right. All right, Bubba. All right. You guys are ready? Pay attention to Ricky. All right. Everyone, pay attention to Ricky. Get the whole shot. You ready, little man? You have to spit them up. Hey, listen, I'm gonna start y'all just like I do the big guys. I'm gonna go back here to the first turn. I'm gonna show you one finger. Then I'm gonna show you the blue flag. That means about 30 seconds. Then all of a sudden that left arm will come back in, go out and come in. I'll throw the green flag and you take off. Come on, Joe. Ten seconds. Okay. This is gonna be a flash. Oh. 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 Oh.
with the championship, number eight. Put it into words for us. It's uh, it's unreal, really. Uh, to win one's tough and to back it up is even harder. So to keep it going and go eight straight is unreal. I never, never would have dreamed it was, uh, you know, an actual possibility. There's just too many variables in off-road racing. There's too much to go on. There's too much time out there on the track. There's too many different conditions. I mean. Uh, I mean, that track was unreal. It's completely brutal. Um, if we would have done two folder swaps, there's no way this thing would have finished. It was just pure self from the drop of the gate, and um, it was just fighting the dust and fighting those ruts. And man, I, I banged myself up a couple weeks ago um, in the last race, and I uh, I was a little unsure of how it was going to go, but um, we took it easy the last couple weeks, and. I just really want to get this thing out of the way and not take, not drag it on any longer. And I just uh, stayed to the ground, so kept my nose, the, nose to the ground, and just it was hard to pass out there. So I just tried to keep guys behind me, and like I said, they get around me when I grab do the filters. And uh, but it was, it was a must. Like we would have been, uh, you know, no points if we would have done that. So I got to give it up to the whole team with, without Monty and. Everybody that uh, supports this factory KTM team, uh, this would never be possible. It's um, it's, been, it's been a real honor to uh, to race for this this team my my entire career and uh, finish it out and uh, mm -hmm. go out on top. It's awesome. Absolutely, Caleb. One more thing, man. Uh, talking about today's race, what it took what it took this season. How does uh, ending your career, this finale, this championship campaign you had here in 2020, a year that was absolute chaos for everybody, we could see it in your body language throughout the season. I think back to the John Penton as you're coming in there for the checkered flag, and you could see you visually kind of taking it all in. What was that like for you throughout this entire season? It was, uh, it was good. I came in really prepared and really fit, and uh, the whole season just fell apart with the coronavirus. And Everything was an unknown, but um, you know I did the best I could and staying in shape and riding and stuff. And, um, we, you know, I, like I said, I came into the first beginning just on fire, just ready to go and rearing. And um, I, I dig myself up a couple times, and uh, yeah, once you you do that, it's tough, man. The, the guys are stepping it up. Ben's getting healthy, Stu's healthy again, and uh, they're, they're going fast and. Um, it's, it's like I said, if you're not on top of your game, it's hard to compete with these guys. Uh, and I, I couldn't hang on to them there at the end. And it was, like I said, it was fighting the dust, and it was, so it was hard to even stay stay inside anyway. So um, happy for those guys to uh, you know turn it around and, and have some good results. But uh, yeah, I'm just happy to pull it pull in there, get this eighth championship out of the way. Miss Zach's first championship in the 450 class to get out here, so I had to pull through for them. 
<laughs> I love it, I love it. All right, last question, and then we'll let you pop some bottles and celebrate, my friend. It's wrapped up. There's two rounds of racing left. Are we going to see an Ironman in the following round? Yeah, yeah, for sure. As long as I, you know, this this knee is still troubling. It's it's not healthy by any means. It's uh, it's pretty beat up, and uh, I, I'm noticing I, I'm not recovering quite as fast as I, I once did. So as long as uh, I don't ding myself up anymore, we'll, we'll be at the line next year. That's what we wanted to hear. You guys make some noise. In my opinion, the good.